Welcome to NEB TV. Today I am joined by Eric Hunt, who is a scientist in our Applications and Product Development Group. Hi, Eric. Hi. And we are talking about Argonauts. So, Eric, could you start off by telling us what an Argonaut is? Yeah. So, a prokaryotic Argonaut is a nucleic acid guided endonuclease, which means, unlike normal endonucleases where you'll have uh, cutting in a lot of random locations, uh, prokaryotic Argonaut uses a short nucleic acid guide to bring its activity to a very specific sequence in a substrate that's complementary to that guide. Okay, and how do they differ from Cas enzymes? So they're actually a very different class of enzyme from Cas enzymes. Cas enzymes have two uh, active sites, uh, so they're able to cut in two places on a double-stranded substrate. They still use a nucleic acid guide, so in the case of something like SpyCas9, which everyone's very familiar with, uses an RNA guide to bring its activity to that location, and then each active site cuts each strand of that double-stranded substrate. With a prokaryotic argonaut, that single guide is only cutting opposite of its complementary sequence. So there's only one cut. So in the case of a double-stranded substrate, you'd just be using it like a nickase, almost like um, the D10A nickase Cas9 that we sell. So for the guide uh, portion of it, um, we sell a sgRNA kit, to be able to simplify the synthesis process of a Cas9 guide. It's even easier with an Argonaut. They just use short DNA or RNA guides. In the case of Thermosomophilus Argonaut, which we just launched, it's a short DNA guide. So you could order them from your favorite vendor and just add a phosphate to it, and you have a guide that's ready to use. And what kind of substrates do Argonauts target? So depending on the species uh, that the Argonaut is from, they can target DNA or an RNA substrates, and they can use DNA or RNA guides. Okay. So really there's four big major categories that they would fall into, and some of them have some cross-reactivity between those different categories. So for example, Thermostomophilus Argonaut is a DNA-guided DNA endonuclease, but it also has some activity on RNA substrates as well. Okay, and will they cut in a specific location? Yes, so Thermostophilus argonaut cuts directly across from positions 10 and 11 mm -hmm. in the sequence that's complementary to the guide. So we have an animation that overviews how this argonaut works, so we'll take a look at that. Great. Prokaryotic argonauts are nucleic acid-guided endonucleases involved in prokaryotic cellular defense against foreign genetic elements. When provided with synthetic nucleic acid guides, prokaryotic argonauts can be used as programmable nucleases. Argonauts from different prokaryotic species may utilize either DNA or RNA guides to target DNA or RNA substrates, leading to many potential combinations of guide and substrate preferences. Prokaryotic argonaut proteins are typically comprised of four domains, the mid-domain, the PAS domain, the peewee domain, and the N domain. The mid-domain of prokaryotic argonaut binds a short, single-stranded oligonucleotide guide, which is typically 16 to 18 nucleotides in length. The guide is often 5' phosphorylated, though some argonauts can utilize guides with other 5' chemical modifications. The PAS domain is responsible for holding the 3' end of the guide, while the argonaut searches for a matching sequence. The prokaryotic argonaut guide complex searches for a complementary sequence on the target strand. When a match is found, the 3' end is released to allow for complete base pairing between the guide and substrate. This activates prokaryotic argonaut endonuclease activity in the peewee domain, which contains a metal-dependent RNase H-like active site. A break is created in the phosphodiester backbone of the complementary substrate nucleic acid. In the case of double-stranded substrates, a break is only created in the strand which is complementary to the guide nucleic acid. The endomain is thought to then act as a wedge that helps release the target DNA. Thermus thermophilus argonaut, also known as Titiago, is the first commercially available prokaryotic argonaut from NEB. Titiago is a thermostable prokaryotic argonaut which utilizes short 5' phosphorylated single-stranded DNA guides to target and cut DNA substrates at temperatures between 65 and 85 degrees Celsius. For more information on Titiago, please visit neb.com slash m0665. So Eric, how does one go about designing guides? So the design process for a guide is pretty easy. We've um, worked pretty hard to put up a lot of FAQ um, and a few guidelines to, to help users along, mm -hmm. but they're simply short 16 to 20 nucleotide guides. We recommend 16 to 18 nucleotides um, for the best activity. Okay. 
Uh, they're single-stranded DNA oligos with a 5' phosphate. So we have a couple of different methods. You could order them directly with the phosphate modification already present. Or uh, we also have some methods if you want to do some high-throughput screening um, or a little bit more economical way to make them. Um, if you're not really sure what you want to target right away, mm -hmm. uh, you could just order unmodified guides and then use our T4 PNK. Uh, polynucleotide kinase to add a 5' prime phosphate to those guides. Um, and actually, if you just heat and vac activate the enzyme, you can use it directly right after that. So it's a pretty simple way. So can argonauts be used in vivo? So currently, no. The most well-studied prokaryotic argonauts, as we said, are thermophiles, and that just makes the temperatures that they function at incompatible with for example, like an in vivo gene editing application like Cas9 right. really excels at. Right. But there's been some recent reports of new um, mesophilic um, prokaryotic argonauts, mm -hmm. and the hope is that someday we'll discover one that uh, could potentially be an alternative tool um, to add, kind of add to that okay. uh, endonuclease toolkit for gene editing. Right, right. So what applications can you use the thermophilic argonauts for? So currently, some of the applications are usually involved in diagnostics, either directly or indirectly. Typically, something like a like an enrichment application where you're trying to get rid of a bunch of wild type sequences to really enrich for a rare sequence. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use the argonaut to deplete that. Um, there's also been a couple of publications where the argonaut's been used directly in sort of a biosensor-like fashion to be able to detect a specific sequence. You know, we're focusing on these applications, but uh, we're really excited to see what our customers come up with because they're some of the most inventive researchers out there. That's so. true. That's true. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how NEB discovered this enzyme? Yeah, I think the story of Titiago um, holds pretty true to this vision that our founder Don Combe had for the company to be a company of scientists for scientists. Um, there's a lot of times where a researcher in our, in our research department will say, wow, this is, this is really cool, check this out. Mm -hmm. um, our CSO, Rich Roberts, started this Enzymes for Innovation uh, program where we're sort of able to release these cool enzymes and kind of share that, wow, isn't this cool moment with our customers. Um, and Tiago is one of those enzymes. You know, we don't really have an exact application for it per se, mm -hmm. but um, but we're excited to share it with you know with everybody and see what they come up yeah, with. Yeah, see what right. they come up with. Right, And will any be re be releasing additional argonauts in the future? So argonauts remains um, a very interesting class of enzymes for us, and we're still actively researching them. Um, I couldn't say exactly what the next Argonaut would be, okay. um, but yeah, we're still we're okay. still interested in That's them, exciting. so stay tuned. That's great. Um, so if a customer wants to learn more about these Argonauts, where should they go? So our website um, on the, the Thermostomophilus Argonaut page is, mm -hmm. is full of uh, information that we've added. Um, we're also still looking to actively publish uh, a lot of the work that we've done to be able to share some of this data and methods um, with researchers who are interested in getting this field, but I would say um, you know, the product web page, we have some videos up, we have um, some guidelines for designing guides and uh, some data um, that, that people might find interesting as well. That's great. It's a good place to start. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank I'm you. excited to see what you do next. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if you have any suggestions for future episodes, please let us know.